I wonder, um, have you been since then now, Con Crowler? You've been lectured as to how to. You're doing a fine job always, and very fair, I find out. But this is extraordinary. And honestly, I believe you know the whole timeline around this um, situation is extremely. Um, it's very, very, very uh, utterly unsatisfactory and extraordinary. And I wonder, and I'm worried, and I'm concerned about the people at home looking on, are reading this. And this up to their necks with the COVID situation, or down to the, under, the, under the floor in debt and in fear and anxiety and in trauma with what's going on at the present time. And then we look at this side by side, what's going on and how long it took to have these questions, they all be limited. And I just want to go back on the timeline again, which I feel is utterly extraordinary. June 2019, Supreme Court Judge Mary uh, Finlay Gagan retires. 14th of January 2020, general election called. January 2020, uh, Mr. Seamus Wolf applies to jab for Supreme Court job. February 4th, the Chief Justice Frank Clark, Mr. Frank Clark, writes to Minister of Justice, Mr. Flanagan, seeking a judge for the Supreme Court. February the 8th, the general election, we were all uh, very busy. Uh, February the 17th, the Minister of Justice, Mr. Flanagan, writes to jab, chaired by Chief Justice Frank Clark, asking them to send uh, and uh, recommend a Supreme Court judge. March 09, Jab sits under Chief Justice Frank Clark and clears the name of Mr. Seamus Wolf as the, uh, the only name for the Supreme Court uh, vacancy. March 11th, uh, Jab writes to Minister Flanagan informing him that they have indeed uh, cleared Mr. Seamus Wolf's uh, only name. March, uh, June 27th, in a long gap, the new government was formed. After all those talks and anxiety and wheeling and dealing and horse trading and God knows what else goes on. But I do know that as far as us and rural independence, we were interested, but we weren't wanted. Near, it's near the government, and we have good reason to know why. Minister McEntee brings the only name in Minister Seamus Wolf on July 15th to her first cabinet meeting, I believe, or, 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 or my stand corrected on that. This is deeply suspicious. A fine Gail AG, Mr. Seamus Wolf, applies for, to jab, chaired by the old, his old friend and Chief Justice, Mr. Frank Clark, to a Supreme Court vacancy. It has been vacant for seven months, which is extraordinary. Certainly, if I engage, faces a possible loss of office because of the results of the election, and Justice Clark decides to get moving here and sets the wheels in motion in, in writing to Frank Gale Minister Flanagan, telling him, Mr. Charlie Flanagan, telling him, telling him he needs the, uh, a judge to be appointed. Minister Flanagan writes to Jab, chaired by former Frank Gale supporter and the same Mr. Frank Clark, and asks them to convene to consider the vacancy. They meet in haste, send up Fine Gael support on Mr. Seamus Wolf's name, back to Minister Flanagan. Minister Flanagan suddenly decides to sit on it, the nomination for over three months, three months, 12 weeks, until the new government arrives. He and Minister McEntee appear to have binned the other expressions of interest from well-qualified judges. Um, he hands the minefield over to Fine Gael's new Minister of Justice, Minister McEntee, who takes it to Cabinet. It is absolutely crystal clear that Minister Helen McEntee did not take this decision alone, and probably an absolute innocent indeed, doing the parties, whatever kind of work you want to call it, but it starts with a D. I think it's shocking, shocking. And what process was followed um, for the other judges appointed on the same day, the very same day as Mr. Wolf, James Wolfe's appointment, Justice Wolfe now, where did uh, Minister, Fra uh, Minister McEntee get the advice for these appointments? And did uh, Minister McEntee consult with uh, T. Chuck Michal Martin and Green Party leader Eamon Ryan, and indeed astonished uh, Deputy Varadkar, or indeed former Minister uh, Charlie Flanagan on this? In particular, did Mr. Mac uh, Minister McEntee speak to uh, Minister, former Minister, now backbencher, um, Charlie, Minister Deputy Flanagan, about Mary Morris's appointment, and Ms. Mary Morris's appointment to the court? And question mark, did she know that Ms. Mary Morrissey, Justice Morrissey now, had once worked in Charlie Flanagan's political firm? I mean, I haven't great eyes, I have glasses, and thankfully, but you need a blind man to see what's going on here. A blind man, they're not so blind as those who cannot see at all. This is things from the high heaven. And it's sad, and it's extremely sad because it's, and I have no truck. Are no interest, as I said to you, Count Corner, the day we met, not your sense of the teacher, sorry, but I've assured you that the rural independents have no interest in engaging in a witch hunt of Mr. Justice James Wolfe about a, 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 about a process of impeachment. There's no grounds for it, and we couldn't do what we wanted. 
So I know I won't be supporting that. I'll make that clear from our group at Rural Independence. But we have to get this sorted. And what are the shenanigans? Would this have happened if Minister Ross was still in, 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 in the Cabinet? He lost his seat, unfortunately, and we had many good row. But nonetheless, he tried gallantly for decades, I write about it, but in Cabinet and in the Senate and indeed in the Dáil as an independent backbencher to have reform of the process. And we got some reform. We got a judicial uh, appointments board, no, complaints board, and signed into law, debated here, signed into law about six, seven, eight months ago by the President. And I believe the building is rented. I believe it's staffed to full complement. On the way, there's a doorman to open the door so that, so that Joe Public can make a complaint. But why are they waiting until next June to do it? Why is it being delayed? There's some very sinister questions and reasoning behind this, and I won't put them on record here, but I know what they are. And it's the murky business that's going on. And we do have separation of powers, um, Count Kohler, and, I, and I, I, you can stop me if I stray, but we have people today in the, in the four courts. The courts aren't meant to be sitting about evictions, and they're meant to be sitting at the moment, but they have, they have been right throughout the whole uh, pandemic. The first part of it, and now the second part of it. And we're supposed to have the moratorium in the banks, and people are being evicted from their homes. Please, Sorry? don't go there. I'm not going there. I'm just giving, telling you what's going on. A process. We're saying it's not going on. We're hiding that murky business. And, and it's going to be an avalanche. It's going to be an avalanche uh, after, in, in the new year with the, with the bank's moratorium lifted. And the friends, we can see the Fine Gael friends in the bank, the uh, poachers become gamekeepers, and former minister, ministers going in to be the powerful jobs there. And we know it. We see it. We saw it. And then there's unregul unregulated tugs going around the country. And they were brought before courts and fined uh, as, as um, it's carrying on the heavy gang. Some are mercenaries from other countries with murky pass. And we, our, the, the, the regulation agency is in Tipperary. And I've made complaints there. I went and met him there. And indeed, the chairman came up to the door to meet deputies Collins and Karen Nolan and myself about the situation. But it still goes on. We're supposed to be representing the people here. We have a constitutional right to defend the people and not to persecute and to drive them into oblivion. We had that for generations and centuries by the British. We had Bloody Sunday, which we celebrated last, last week, and we were proud Tipperary people to get out in that field, albeit in Cork, and win. And the spirit of that jersey and the spirit of the people that fought for this country, I'm talking about Trasic and Breen, and indeed, um, um, as I said, Trump, um, uh, Michael Hogan, and those people who spilt their blood, and countless others. For what kind of a democracy did we get? We looked for it and we fought for it. What have we got? It's as twisted as any, any, some of the junctures in, in Africa and other places that we talk about. It's shocking. It's sad. I'm privileged to be, to be represented here for the moment, represented people temporarily for the moment, and I, I respect that greatly. And I will abide by their wishes in future elections. But it's sad that this goes on and continues to go on. And the Fine Gael think that they can do what they like with this. It's their preserve. Because they were so long out of power since Paddy Dunnigan and Paddy Coney and that gang over there, or at risk some of them now, I, and all of them did, I don't know, but, but that, the heavy gang, they operate in 73 to 79. You've heard me refer to it, sorry, 73 to 77. You've heard me refer to it, that has crept back into the business committee by some of the enforcers who shouted a minute ago for you to make sure before I got up to be censored and be controlled. But I won't be censored or controlled by Fine Gael. But the sad part about it is that we have a sad situation of a Taoiseach now who's so behoven and craving to get that job. He's got his prizes, like got his first communion, or he's got his leaving set, or whatever. And whatever happens, whatever happens, not get away and him losing his job. As he knows with fear and terror that Leo is riding behind the polls, or Minister Bradka, sorry, and if he keeps, kicks up, they'll jump him over and we'll have an election. And he'll be gone. That prize will be taken away from him. That he must look after. He's looking for it for 25 years. And he got it. And kicked out his own minister's ballot count. Kicked out his own minister, Derek Cleary. And Save the Fine Gael skin. We saw it two weeks ago with the Taoiseach answering the questions, now tarnished her, and we see it here again today. But the Fine Gael can be sacrificed. A proud party that was founded, founded member of my father can be sacrificed to the world for the sake of naked greed of power and luxury. And what else? So we see it every day here with disdain when we ask questions about what's going on. We can't get the information about the, the figures that are dead, about the COVID, proper, about the COVID counts. We can't get the science. And we protect it. It doesn't matter what happens. God, if a tsunami came, once he could swim over, he'd stay, keep his head above the hell, and the hell of the crop he'd lie down. Forget the country. Forget the people who fought for Ireland. Forget the families struggling today. Forget the workers that are out there trying to work and carry on and try to make a living and eke out a living. And let the big businesses and the banks and the insurance companies and the, and the vultures carry on the murky, dirty, messy work of sucking the lifeblood out of the fighting spirit of the Irish. And I ask, and I put a call out to the fighting spirit of the Irish, to rise up 
and not take this disgraceful behaviour. It's pathetic. And I wouldn't, in the spirit of CJ Kicking and running a home, I won't take it, I accept it. And the spirit of the McInerney family in Castle and many others, and TJ McInerney fighting there. The ballot box is going to change all this very soon. We thought we got it the last time, but we didn't. Thank you, they have everybody. control, and the fingers are on the handlebars of power, and you need a chisel and a hammer to get them off it. Good Thank you very much. Now, um